Hello everybody, my name is Matt from the Air Zoo. I'm working from home today, as I'm sure many of you are as well. We're not gonna let that stop us from diving into some awesome science. So today we're gonna be talking about something that I'm very passionate about, and that is the science of sound and music. Uh, we're going to be looking at two basic elements of sound and then later on we're going to use them to create some music. Let's get started. All right, so to begin we need to define what sound is. Sound is just a series of vibrations. Uh, so most of you use speakers on a daily basis, whether it's something like this or it's headphones or earbuds, uh, even the, the speakers that are built into your phone or your computer. These devices create sound by producing vibrations at a specific frequency that you perceive as recorded music or the audio for your videos. Uh, musical instruments work in a similar way. Um, each of them is also created to put off vibrations at specific frequencies that you perceive as music. Now what are frequencies? I am glad you asked. So think about the word frequency. When we normally use the word frequency or frequent, we're usually referring to how often a certain thing happens over a certain period of time. Now vibrations occur in cycles. If we look at a chart, these cycles have what are called a crest and a trough. When we measure the distance from one crest to the next or one trough to the next, we are finding this frequency's wavelength. Now wavelengths occur over a period of time, and a shorter wavelength is going to take less time to complete than a longer one. We measure wavelengths per second in hertz, which is the standard measurement for frequency. One hertz equals one wavelength per second. Now this would be so low that we couldn't hear it. Our ears have a range of 20 to 20,000 hertz, and the human voice averages in the neighborhood of 1,000 hertz. And if you are wondering why those numbers seem so unbalanced, it's just because the number of wavelengths per second grow exponentially as the pitch grows higher. All right, so I know that was a lot of information, but let's demonstrate this on the keyboard. All of these keys have a letter name from A to G, and we're going to start with a pitch that we refer to as middle C. This is a central location on the keyboard, and this pitch has a frequency of 261 hertz. So roughly 261 vibration cycles occur per second while this pitch is played. Now if I jump down, this pitch down here is also a C. You can hear the similarity in the pitch, but it's also clear that one is lower and one is higher. That's because the lower C is just below 131 hertz. It's exactly half of the frequency of the middle C. In music, we refer to this distance as an octave. Now, if we start at middle C and we jump up an octave to the next C up here, this pitch will be double the frequency of middle C, coming in at a little over 523 hertz. All right, so now that we have frequency down, we're gonna talk about intensity. Now, intensity is a lot easier to wrap our minds around. It's just how soft or how loud a sound is. In music, we refer to this as dynamics. If you have a musical background, I'm sure you're familiar with terms like forte, piano, mezzo forte, mezzo piano. These terms all represent a relative range of intensity from soft to loud. Now, while frequency was measured in hertz, intensity is going to be measured in decibels. All right, so we're going to look at the piano again, and we're going to look at middle C, like we did before. Uh, like we said before, this pitch is a frequency of just over 261 hertz, and that will never change. Doesn't matter how hard I hit the key, doesn't matter what instrument I use, middle C will always be 261 hertz. But the intensity will change depending on how hard or soft I strike the key. Now I'm using an app on my phone to measure the decibels produced when I hit the key. I'm not sure exactly how accurate it is, but it's close enough to demonstrate the relationship between different intensities. So I'm going to play middle C very softly. That peaked at about 37 decibels. Now if I hit the key harder, that peaked at about 63 decibels. Now our voices can be much louder than what this electronic keyboard can produce. So if I sing middle C, <laughs> that peaked at around 83 decibels. So that should give you an idea of how intensity works. All right, so let's make this practical. We have frequency, or these series of pitches, 
and we have intensity or dynamics, these loud and soft ranges. So how are we going to take these tools and turn it into something meaningful? Each individual frequency or pitch, when paired with other pitches, uh, they're going to make up what we call melody. This is the main line of a song. This is the prominent series of pitches. A melody is arguably the most important aspect of a song, but on its own, it's a little empty. There are a series of frequencies that can complement this melody. They're different pitches, but they serve to fill out what is going on in the melody, and we refer to this as harmony. Finally, intensity or dynamics are used to express different moods or emotions. Something really soft might be peaceful or thoughtful. Uh, maybe it's just something really sad. Uh, well, something very loud might indicate uh, extreme excitement or anger, or maybe something really epic. Uh, this is an incredibly important element of music uh, that will separate something that's very dry from something that's extremely expressive. So let's take all these elements that we've been working on and make some music. So I'm going to play the melody of just the chorus of a familiar pop song. So you may have recognized that as part of the chorus of the song Perfect by Ed Sheeran. It's a little empty though, so we're going to add in some complementary frequencies to form the harmony. Just to add some expression, we're going to alter our intensity or our dynamics. We're going to start with something a little louder and then shift to a soft tone at the end. So to me, using the dynamics in that way transitioned from a very passionate expression to something gentle. And now with just the two concepts of frequency and intensity, we just formed an expressive piece of music. All right, so before we end, I just want to make clear that what I just shared with you is not the be all end all for how to create music. Uh, what we just worked on was based out of what we would refer to as tonal Western art music. Now, I'm not going to get into all of that today, but basically it's what influences a lot of the music that you're probably familiar with, uh, from modern pop all the way back to something like uh, classical music. Uh, but there's plenty of other ways to create music. A lot of these stem from different cultures or different schools of thought. So there's plenty more out there for you to discover, uh, but either way, it's all going to be based off of intensity and frequency just like what we worked on today. All right, guys, so we're gonna wrap it up here for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned something new and I hope you create some music of your own this week. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed this, make sure to check out the Airzoo's YouTube channel. Uh, we're uploading fun educational content from exciting chemistry experiments to fascinating historical accounts. Stay safe, stay healthy. Hope you all have a great week.